Hi and welcome back to Movies Explained. Today we will be recapping a movie called Savage Grace. So without further ado, let's begin. The first shot of the movie shows a mother holding her child and singing a gentle hymn in his ear. The narrator, who is the child, describes the personalities of his mother as warm and delightful, adventurous and a gifted person, and his dad as a speaker of different languages who climbed mountains and is cold and dark. Barbara wearing a gown and walks into the shot as the mother of little Tony. She places him in the cot and gently strokes his face and says, Your mommy loves you. Tony refers to himself as the steam created when hot meets cold. The scene then shifts to New York in 1946. Barbara phones Midge and informs him that Prince Ashwin Lip, whose brother was Prince Bernhard, had requested Midge and Yost's company tonight at Stork Club. Barbara suggests the time 10.30, laughs, and asks if it was too continental. She then says, Can you imagine the world Tony is growing up in? and says he can hear all your catty remarks. Brooks, the father of Tony, appears in the shot, his hair combed with a serious look on his face. Barbara puts down the phone and kisses Brooks. Brooks inquires if she was making commitments for her. Barbara picks up the phone yet again, this time telephoning Prince Ushvin to Lip and inviting him to the supper with Midge and Yost. Meanwhile, Brooks lights a cigarette and sits on a chair facing Barbara. Brooks complains about wearing his tux saying why should he dress up as a monkey to eat supper. Barbara tells him not to be vulgar in front of Tony and just wear his uniform. Brooks says the war was over. Barbara says you volunteered for the war, so you have the right to wear the uniform. Brooks then inquires whether Barbara is taking Tony with them or is he staying home alone referring to Tony as Little Paragon. Barbara then tells Brooks that Nini the nanny will be here by 9. In the next scene, Nini is bathing Tony while Barbara gets ready for supper. Barbara tells Nini his full name is Anthony and that when she shows people his photograph, she should tell them this is Tony to which Nini replies I'll tell them it's an angel. Brooks enters the room asking for Barbara. Barbara bids Tony and Nini farewell. At the store club, the classical violin plays. Barbara looks dashing in her purple dress and gets complimented by everyone. All eyes are on her. Barbara and Brooks get seated and greet their guests. They settle in. The clamor of glasses and plates at the restaurant and smiles are passed around. Barbara greets Simone. Barbara then asks Brooks to tell the guests his story about his little adventures, referring to a villa. Brooks then tells the story about the time he and Dieter went to Vilcabamba, intrigued by the mystery of Manco Inca. Time passes by, and the drinks are served. Barbara then asks Simone an absurd question and later Brooks. Brooks gets pissed by the questions and Barbara simply laughs. While getting out of the club, a drunk Barbara gets into a car of a stranger, saying Brooks would do the same. Brooks tries to stop her but she doesn't. Brooks goes home where Nini inquires about their day and asks where's Barbara to which Brooks replies she would come later on her own. Nikki asks about the Prince of Amsterdam to which Brooks corrects her saying she met Prince of Bernhard of Netherlands and refers to him as a decent man. Barbara returns home later in the night and breastfeeds Tony while Brooks eyes her. Tony described from his memories how his father used to describe the simplicity of wedding with his mother. He recalled of a cheap wedding ring and no formality for them to be wedded off. The scene then shifts to Paris in 1959. Tony, now all grown up, walks in his jeans and shorts carrying a strawberry ice cream in his hand. He serves breakfast to Barbara in bed, who's had a hangover. Tony asks where his father is to which Barbara replies he's with Duran. Tony asks what were they going to do today, to which Barbara replies tonight we're going to Hippo with Marcel and his wife Tini. Tony persuades Barbara to let him ride the Ferris wheel. Brooks and Duran are shown fencing in their suits. They both battle it out, but Brooks defeats Duran. Later, they have a conversation where Brooks mentions to Duran that Barbara only thinks that other men find her attractive. What she doesn't realize is other women find me attractive as well. Barbara and Tony go out to the park. Barbara is wearing a black fedora and white clothes. She looks like a swan. They have some conversation and Barbara tells Tony that she was almost an actress and his father was a mathematician who writes and explores. She tells Tony that to be successful, they must work and that Brooks, Nini, and Barbara all had worked to reach this point where they are today. Later that day, Brooks arrives with the guests. They have some conversation in French. Brooks meets Monsieur Sylvester and Carlos. They have dinner and later Monsieur compliments Barbara's ass in French, which she ignores. Barbara tries to impress the guests by having Tony read a book in French, but Tony is unable to do so. Carlos tells her in French about raising her child right to which Barbara implodes, gets angry, and tells him he had no right to guide her on how to raise her child and that she understood French. Brooks along with the guests leaves. 
Barbara follows Brooks to his hotel room where she seduces him. Brooks first tries to stop her but later lets her get intimate with him. It's in the morning and Barbara and Brooks enter Tony's room. Brooks is surprised to find a boy in Tony's bed and asks Tony who was in the bath and what was he doing there. Barbara seems completely unfazed by this while Brooks seems concerned about Tony's sexuality. Brooks asks for the boy to leave. The scene now shifts to Kadax in 1967. Tony, brown-eyed, now a grown-up teenager is shown riding a white horse. They are on a beach. The crashing of the waves and the wind all makes it serene. His friend asks for a cigarette. Tony eyes up at some girls laying there on the beach. Later that day, his father gives him some pep talk about women and their ways with men and that someday Tony would be on his own. Brooks and Tony fuss about a conversation with Barbara. Brooks says this conversation wouldn't have happened if she had been there on time. Tony meets Blanca on the beach where they dance together with his friend by his side and a cigarette in his hand. Tony starts to get a liking for Blanca and asks his parents for Blanca to go with them on a road trip. Tony gets a little aggressive to which Brooks scolds him. Barbara tells Brooks a mother knows when her child likes someone. The family goes on the trip together. Blanca and Tony in the rear seat of the convertible, holding hands, while Barbara and Brooks are in the front. Barbara driving the car. The wind runs through their hair. In the bar, Blanca shows a lot of interest in Brooks's conversations about history and his adventures. Barbara orders some more shots to drive Tony away, and they sit down. Later in the night, the family tires after their journey and they all go to sleep. Blanca and Tony in one room while Barbara and Brooks in the other. Blanca and Tony get intimate. Later in the night, Tony is seen sitting awake with his journal. Tony narrates that he brought Blanca home like a mouse to its prey and Brooks took it like a kitten who just had its first prey. Barbara storms to airport hurriedly looking for someone. She inquires about a flight and finds out it's been delayed. Later Brooks and Blanca are seen together. It is revealed that Brooks cheated on Tony and Barbara with Blanca. They were together now and were leaving on their own. Barbara verbally insults Brooks and Blanca, calling her a whore and gold digger looking for money. Brooks just smiles on her face. Barbara lights up a cigarette, turns around and leaves. She gets in a taxi, leaves and gets intimate with the taxi driver. Later Barbara gets out of the taxi and pays the driver. She starts crying but quickly covers her tears, wears sunglasses and walks confidently. Barbara enters a room where she discovers Tony getting intimate with his friend Jack. Barbara is furious about Brooks and tells Tony about her encounter at the airport. Jack hands her a cigarette and tells her to calm down. Barbara tells Tony to join her and Sam for dinner and leaves. Tony and Jack look at each other and smile and make out. Tony narrates telling us about Sam as a walker who was homosexual and often accompanied women to operas when their husbands were not available. Sam was hired by Barbara to satisfy her needs. Barbara is worried about her dignity and outlook now that Brooks was not with her and takes guidance from Sam. Sam advises her to go out often on her own and start painting more and not show herself as a divorcee. Tony and Barbara are together in her convertible. Brooks had chosen to stay near a place where Barbara and Tony were and was angry about this. He asks Barbara with a confused and despairing face whether Brooks or Blanca hated him. Sam comforts Tony seeing he's disturbed by the recent events, and it leads to them sleeping together. The next day Tony, Sam, and Barbara are all sitting together at the table when Tony storms out. Blanca shouts at Sam saying you shouldn't have done that. Sam replies that Tony is now a grown-up and capable of his own life decisions. Tony writes a letter to Brooks begging him to come back and that Blanca needs her but she's too full of pride to admit it. Tony takes the letter and goes to Brooks' house where he hides the letter in the topsoil near some plants. Brooks sees him do so but doesn't stop him or call out to him. However, Blanca, seeing this, tries to confront Tony but before she could say anything Tony runs away. She picks up the letter and goes back into the house. The next scene shows Barbara painting on a canvas. She can't overcome her emotions and starts crying. Sam tries to comfort her by placing her hands around her but she turns around and kisses him aggressively and they get intimate. Tony returns and finds himself lonely and narrates that he was lonely at the time and needed someone to comfort him the most, but no one was there for him. He decided to become a new man just for the sake of Barbara. Tony looks for Barbara and Sam only to find them together asleep in bed. Seeing this, Tony joins them and the night passes. The next day, the three of them find themselves together in bed and they start laughing hysterically. Sam leaves both Tony and Barbara on their own. He places his suitcase in the trunk of a taxi and bids them farewell. While kneeling on Tony's shoulder, Barbara says that she is glad he is gone and then starts laughing. 
The scene shifts to Paris in 1968. After being left alone with Brooks and Sam, Barbara tries to take her life by slitting her wrists, but somehow Tony was able to save her and take her to the hospital. Tony, still in a bad state of mind, elopes that Brooks didn't pay any attention to him and asks Simone who had come to visit Barbara about Brooks that whether he cared about any of them. Barbara fully recovers and they both go on a dinner together. Paris was intended by Barbara as a change for both of them and she was right to some extent. Tony had finally started writing backward in his journal so only he could read his thoughts, but Barbara was still able to somehow read them as if she was inside his head. Barbara calls Tony while taking a bath. Tony gives her some ice cream and on her behalf rubs the wounds on her wrist with cotton and iodine. She then tells Tony she has to meet Ethel and asks for some privacy and Tony leaves her to dress. The scene shifts and shows Tony attending a funeral where he sees Brooks and Blanca together. Brooks looks at Anthony and ignores him and greets other guests there. Anthony looking at him in despair walks away defeated. The scene shifts to London. It is now the year 1972. Tony is seen sitting on a sofa with a lighter in his hand, smoking a cigarette. He is well dressed in a suit and tie and his hair is brushed well. Barbara talks with Ethel while having British tea at their house. Ethel asks about Tony to which Barbara replies he was doing well in London and taking part in activities. Mishka joins the ladies. Ethel asks Mishka about dinner to which he replies what's not to like. Barbara says she would love to have dinner at their place and Anthony would be thrilled as well. As Barbara returns home, Tony inquires her about a dog collar, but she says she doesn't know about it. Barbara asks Tony about his clothing and Tony mentions Timothy, a friend he had made in London but Barbara doesn't like Tony seeing much of Timothy, being he was gay. Barbara then places her hand on Tony's crotch. Tony first tries to stop her but then he lets her unbutton him. Barbara and Tony get intimate and have sex on the sofa. After a while, Tony with Barbara sitting near her asks her again about the dog collar. Barbara doesn't get the significance of the dog collar and scolds Tony. Tony gets frustrated and asks Barbara to look for it saying it was the collar of Gitto, a dog he loved and was no longer there. Tony starts looking for it in the cabinets and he finds it somewhere in the cabinets. Barbara finds Tony sitting in the kitchen with his thumb in his hand and she shouts at him saying he's no longer a baby anymore. He confronts Barbara accusing her of hiding it from him and shouts in her face. Barbara asks Tony to calm down. Barbara tries to help Tony, but he pushes her away. Tony and Barbara both start arranging cutlery in the cupboards. Tony, in his confused mental state of mind and filled with rage, asks Barbara what she wrote on the paper in backward writing when they fought in the morning. Barbara refuses saying she didn't write such a thing and they both read newspapers together that morning. Tony slowly grabs a knife from the kitchen counter and turns to Barbara. Tony confesses that he tore the paper on which she wrote and flushed it down, but some pieces remained on top. Barbara says I don't understand when you say nonsense and moves towards Tony. When he drives the knife into her stomach, she shakily and slowly sits on the ground. Tony, with no emotions on his face, sits near her lifeless body. He gets up and leaves the kitchen. Tony picks up the phone and calls the ambulance and the cops, telling the address is 83, Cadogan Square. He then orders rice with pork for himself and receives the order at the door, leaving the door open. Sitting on the ground with his mother's head in his lap while eating rice, Tony was discovered by the policeman. Barbara's body is covered and transferred. Tony is driven away in the police car, his face emotionless and relieved. In the final scene, Brooks wearing spectacles made preparations for Barbara's funeral which was to be held at St. Mary's at 6.30 on November 30th. All this while, Tony had been writing this letter to his father from jail. He said he was finally burden free and that he loved mom and wished they could be all together. In the end, it is narrated that Anthony was sent to Broadmoor an institution for clinically insane on charges of manslaughter. He was released in 1980 and moved in with Nini, Barbara's mother, but tried to kill her with a knife over an argument. He was sentenced yet again and sent to Rikers Island where he took his own life. His body was discovered with a plastic bag over his head. The movie ends here. Thanks for watching. If you liked it then please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. We will see you in the next one.